Hello everyone. Welcome to tonight's class on child facial proportions. I am your instructor, Adrienne Hodge. And if you are just joining us, this is a weekly online class with Michaels and uh, we cover a wide range of topics in drawing and painting. And we use all supplies that are sold at Michaels. And I've been teaching these classes since July 2021. And so if uh, you're just joining us, there's a whole bunch of classes uh, listed on YouTube that you can refer back to, uh, all of the free classes anyway. The premium classes that you might see some coming up on the schedule are, uh, those links are only sent to students who or register for the class beforehand. So but all of the free classes are easily referenced on YouTube. Uh, last week's class, we covered adult facial proportions. And tonight we're gonna cover child facial proportions. I provided a reference image uh, for tonight's class, but you can apply everything that we're doing in the class to any photograph where you can see an entire head um, of a child. So, um, and likewise, for last week's class, if you go and catch up on YouTube, you can use the reference photos that are provided in the supply list, or you can use any uh, photograph that you have where you can see an entire adult's head. So we're really focusing on uh, proportions of uh, the face and reference to the head. And um, yeah, I'll get into all that as we go along. I'm going to switch to my tabletop view and go over supplies. So pretty straightforward supply list tonight. You just need a sketchbook, some sketching pencils, and uh, an eraser. I'm using Faber-Castell pencils and an eraser from Michaels. And then I'm using the Canson sketchbook or drawing pad here. This one, okay. So uh, don't forget to follow me on uh, Instagram. I'm at Adrian Hodge Art, and you can tag your work with those hashtags, make it with Michaels or Michaels Classes. I'm also on Facebook, Adrian Hodge Fine Art on Facebook. And here's some of my business cards with some of my celestial skyscapes from a few years back. Okay, so, and then I just realized I've got an image underneath one that's kind of distracting. So I'm gonna block out the, the page behind here just a bit. Okay, so I always like to manage expectations in uh, classes as far as what the product of the, the class will be by the, the end of the hour. And uh, last week, I might have been a little excited about the very large crowd um, in last week's class and forgot to do that at the beginning. So I wanna make sure that I do that tonight um, because this is just a one hour long class and uh, the class is about facial proportions. So we are definitely going to cover all of the basics of uh, mapping and sketching a head and how to find accurate facial proportions. And I'll give you some tips about uh, capturing likeness. But aside from that, as far as like filling in the drawing, I tried to like not go too far with these and, and draw the you know, the value on the face too much, even though I know I got a little carried away. And oftentimes when I'm creating the, the class content, I, you know, can get carried away and I want it to be eye catching. And if it was just, you know, a generic child uh, map of a head and there wasn't any uh, facial features and value shading and stuff added, then it, it might not have been quite as eye-catching. So the amount of detail that is going to be added to your head by the end of the class is really up to you. Um, so this was last week's class on uh, adult facial proportions, and it was the same thing. Like mostly we're going to be creating a map of the head, and I'm definitely going to add some uh, value and some details to the head and talk about that a little bit. 
but um, we're not going to go super in depth. So I tried to leave them a little bit unfinished on purpose. And yeah, so just managing expectations there, because I think last week um, there might have been, you know, some desire for us to like do the whole shebang, you know, and we've only got an hour and there's likely going to be some questions and some interruptions and everything. So we'll get as far as we can, but we're definitely going to map facial proportions and have an understanding of that by the end of the class. Any questions about the supply list before we get started? Uh, okay, doesn't sound like it. All right, so um, we are using these two photographs of my children. Um, this is my daughter, Elliot, and this is my son, Jack, who we have drawn before in a, uh, well, we've actually drawn both of them before in a couple of other classes. Uh, and I just realized I didn't tell our lovely moderator about, I was like, I don't think I'm going to reference too many previous classes, but uh, there was one other class on mapping and contouring um, ahead. And we went really in depth into drawing a photograph of my son um, within the past year, I believe it was in May and it was called mapping and contouring um, a portrait. It definitely had mapping and contouring in the title. And uh, it was a photograph of Jack and we, it was a two-part free class, which was really great. So that one is definitely a nice one to refer back to. And then we drew my daughter kind of far away as a figure in a landscape. And that one was, most of it was uh, a premium class, but the beginning of it, sketching it was, was free. So um, anyway, those are the other two times that we've, we've drawn my kids and we have, you know, I think the, the one on mapping and contouring heads was the only other free class where we really went in depth um, into portraits. We've done a lot more premium content with figures and, and portraiture. Okay, so in last week's class with the adult proportions, I wanted you to have the printout of the photograph because we're going to be drawing directly onto the fo photo and, uh, you know, mapping out the, the head in that way. So uh, honestly, when it comes to child facial proportions, there really is not a huge difference between um, adult and child facial proportions, how you find proportions of the head. Uh, it's the same exact um, method for mapping the head. The only main difference between child facial proportions and adult facial proportions is that the eyes and the lips uh, primarily appear much larger on the head, they take up way more space on the head, and also the roundness and the shape of, of the head is just a little softer. So the cheeks are a little fuller. Um, there's just more of a, a roundness and a, a suppleness to the head. And I was looking for my adult printouts to refer back to. I think I have them in the sketchbook and I can just kind of compare you know, just a, an adult head to a child head, even though it's printed out a little smaller. So there's just, you know, narrower features, uh, narrow, like the skin on the, the cheeks is not quite as full. It's, you know, a little closer to the bone there on the skull. Uh, you can see the, the jawline and everything is just more defined on an adult head versus on a a child's head. So we can really tell that we're looking at a child's head when we are just sketching the overall shape of the head, mainly because of this fullness and this roundness that, that we're going to see for the most part. So, um, and it's interesting. It's always just worth noting the beauty industry and things that are done in uh, Photoshop and things of that sort to models or celebrities in, uh, you know, when editing is done to a person's face to make them look more useful, what are the things that we see being done on these apps or these filters to make, you know, our, our 
more aged features look more youthful, right? It's more roundness in the, the cheeks, more um, plumpness in the lips, more enlargement of the eyes, um, smoothness, you know, to the overall, uh, you know, skin around the face. It's all of those things that are, think about what a filter on Instagram is doing to an older adult's face to make them look more youthful. And you've got the difference between adult and child facial proportions. So it's really just larger eyes, larger lips, um, primarily taking up a little more space on the face and that fullness and that roundness uh, around the jawline and the cheeks. Okay, but let's map it out and just see it in action and see the, the difference. Um, it's also very easy when you're sketching a child to accidentally make them look older by not putting these things in. So uh, if you're trying to sketch a child's uh, face and head for the first time and you're running into issues and you feel like, you know, I'm drawing like a two-year-old or a four-year-old and they just, they look like an eight or nine-year-old in, in my drawing, then it pay attention to those things, pay attention to the roundness um, of the the cheeks and the the around the jawline. You know, we're not seeing a, a lot of definition in the the jawline, um, and those sorts of things. And then, yeah, making the lips a little bigger. The first time I drew my daughter, she was about two and a half in the uh, photograph, and I just could not get it to look like her. And I finally just told myself, I'm going to draw her lips four times larger than I think they need to be. And then it looks like her because her lips really were that big. Okay, so I'm gonna switch to my other sketchbook here. Um, the number one question that I get asked in all of these classes is, what pencil are you using? I'm going to be using a 2B pencil so that my lines will show up on the screen, but I want you to use a uh, H pencil to get started here. And if you're unfamiliar with the letters and numbers on the H and B pencils, you can refer back to the very first class in this uh, series of classes I've been doing with Michaels from July 2021. It was called Intro to Graphite and Drawing Forms. Um, as I see, um, that's always a, a question that's happening in the chat. So um, if you're unfamiliar with the graphite pencils, that's what you should check out because I'm not going to go into it now, but uh, I'm using a B pencil just so my lines will show up on Zoom. I want you to use an H pencil so that your lines can be easily erased, except you might want to use a darker pencil for the drawing on top of the photograph because then your lines will also show up uh, darker. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take note of where the crown of the head is. And I did this. Actually, let's start with my daughter since it's a little more clear where the uh, crown of her head is in the photograph. Um, so I did this in last week's class as well. I'm just going to switch to my face forward camera for just one second. Okay, if you take a sketchbook and balance it on the top of your head, that's the crown of your head. It's way up there. Okay, so we're measuring. You can even take a ruler and like measure the distance between the crown of your head and your chin. So the crown of the head is way up here at the top where a book would balance. It's not the hairline. And there's oftentimes people get confused and they're thinking more about the top of the hairline as being the, the top because they're thinking about the face. They're not really thinking about the head. So we're talking about the entire head here. Um, and if it's helpful, you can draw a box around the entire head. So we're gonna draw like a big boxy rectangle around the whole head in the photograph. Also, I used photographs of my kids that didn't have, well, the one of my son has a lot of, a little more dark and light shadows, but this one, I kind of limited the value here because I didn't want to get too carried away with the value and I wanted to just focus on the, the facial features. Okay, so way up here from the crown of her head, we're going to measure first and put a vertical line 
down the center and she's facing pretty straight forward in this picture. Her head is a little tilted, but it's still a pretty straight vertical line going down from the, the center of the crown of her head and through the center of her nose and the center of her lips. Um, if her head, like when we get to my son, his head is very much tilted, that's not going to be a straight line. So that's the other reason I wanted to start with her. Okay. So, but her head is slightly tilted. So the box itself is a little tilted. Okay. So that line is not perfectly straight from the, the top to the bottom. So on a bit of a diagonal. Okay, and then we're going to see where the line is at the center of the eyes, and it should be about halfway down. So the average person's eyes are about halfway down from the crown of their head to their chin, and there is no perfectly proportioned person. There's no, uh, you know, perfect human being that we measure all human beings against. So it's always that particular person's facial proportions in reference to that person's head. So we're looking for where the halfway point is. It may be right at the center between the crown of the head and the chin. It might be more, um, you know, the halfway point might be more underneath the eyes. It might be just above the eyes. So find that line at the center of the eyes, the eye line, and note where that is in reference uh, to your, you know, exact halfway point. And if you wanted to measure with a ruler, you can, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to eyeball it. Uh, typically the top of the ears are going to be in line with that eye line on Elliot. It looks like the top of her ears are going to be more in line with her eyebrows. So find your line for the, the top of the ears. Most of the time, a person's ears are in line with the uh, center of the eyes. So it's just those, those little things are what make us unique. Except, wait a second, I think I'm getting confused by where the top of her ears are because of her hair. The more I look at it, I'm like, wait a second. Top of her ear is right about there. So it's more in line with like her eyelids, I would say, not quite up there by her um, eyebrows so much. Okay, and then we're going to find the line for the nose. And typically that's going to be approximately halfway down from the eye line to the chin. So, and it looks like on Elliot, it is about there, the nose line, okay. And then from here, we're kind of creating smaller and smaller boxes. If you're familiar with the golden ratio, the Fibonacci sequence, we're creating these rectangles that then follow the rule of thirds, which is quite fascinating how uh, most people's faces line up with that uh, rule of thirds and the golden ratio. So what's happening here is the areas of interest, the lips are about a third of the way down from uh, the nose line, but I like to measure this moment right here, this little cleft that happens underneath people's lips, this little shadow that shows up or just the underneath the lip line. And that is typically about halfway between the nose and the bottom of the chin. Um, but then you can also draw a line for the center of the lips. Okay, so find where the center of the lips is, and sometimes it's easier to find where the point is underneath the lips. Okay, so there's our lip line, and then we've got our chin line. I'm kind of drawing into the, writing into the part of the photo you can't read. And then we've got the crown of the head. So those are our main, uh, mapping points and then we've got the ears were in line with just above the center of the eyes and then uh, the bottom of the ears are typically in line with the bottom of the nose and that's easier to see on my adult photo here but people break these rules you know people's faces break these rules all the time so it's that particular person that you're drawing their ears might be you know 
higher up on their head or their ears might be smaller on their head. So it just depends on uh, the person that you're, you're drawing. And these are just, it's a basic guide that we use to measure heads, but it's not foolproof. You have to look and observe that person that you're drawing. Okay, some other things that tend to line up on pretty much all faces, um, but not all, but most, is the tear ducts tend to be in line with, and this photo printout kind of made the side of the nose disappear, but the edge of the nose, the edge of the nostrils typically are going to be in line with the, um, the tear ducts. And then give me just one moment. I've been battling a bit of a sore throat today and I could just feel it. I was about to have a tickle and then I've got to take a minute and take a drink of my tea. Okay, so, <clears throat> excuse me. On pretty much all faces, again, this is a generalization. This does not apply to everyone, but usually you can draw a dotted line from the center of the pupils, and then you can hit the line at the center of the lips. But as I am doing that on this photograph, I'm seeing that it does not quite meet. So, and this is, you know, just one of those things where it doesn't line up perfectly on everyone. So most of the time you can draw that uh, that center line from the pupil down and hit the edge of the lips. Like I'm just gonna grab the photo of Jack real quick and see if it does on him. And it looks like just about, but not quite either. So that's where you take note of that, where those those things are in reference to each other. Okay, the other thing I like to map, and we're going to sketch this on our this whole map on our paper in just a minute, and that's going to help us really find the correct proportions of this particular head, is we look at the elevational high points. So where is the elevation the highest on this head? Because the head is not flat. It has a very convex and concave surface that dips and curves like a mountain range. So on the peak of a mountain is where the light is going to hit more directly. And then in the valleys next to a mountain uh, is where the shadows will be, right? The shadows that are cast by the peaks of the mountain. So on a skull, we can see on a skull where the high points are on the bones. So the forehead comes forward. The And on this photo, it's very washed out. We're not seeing a whole lot of values, but we still know that the cheeks are going to be the highlights. So we've got big round circles on the cheeks. We're going to put a big circle on the tip of the nose. And then we're going to put a big circle on the chin. Those are our elevational high points. And it took me so long into adulthood and mapping heads like this to realize that clowns are like highlighting the features of a skull whenever they draw like the, the triangle shape across the nose. That's what we see on a skull, right? Um, so that can be really helpful to uh, us creating these uh, the different areas of value that we're going to see. So all the shadows are going to show up where um, just underneath the elevational high point. So there's going to be more of a shadow underneath the nose, underneath the lips, uh, underneath the eyes, underneath the eyebrows. All of those elevational high points are going to create shadows underneath them. I also like to sometimes draw a big circle right here across the eyes. Again, just thinking about the skull and the big empty, you know, space for the, the eye socket on a skull. And that usually can just help us see like how big that and that depth of that area is going to be in our drawing. Um, so 
you can draw that directly onto your photograph. I think that is very helpful if you have a printout to do that. It also creates a little muscle memory there. OK, so now let's start sketching this map on our paper. So I'm going to start with my um, box. And I'm going to put my box at a bit, bit of a tilt since the head that we're looking at here is tilted slightly to the right. So I'm drawing a tilted rectangle. And I'll try to draw nice and dark so that my lines show up while also keeping it kind of light because as you are doing this, I want you to keep it nice and light and I want you to not commit to anything yet. So as we're doing this, it's very unlikely that you're going to draw the head perfectly mapped the very first time that you sketch it. So uh, that's why we're kind of going general to specific here. So I like to start with a big circle at the top and it's going to actually fill most of my rectangle. Nice big circle inside of my rectangle. And then I'm going to do a half oval shape off the bottom of that to create my egg shape for my head. So we've most everyone has a egg shape to their head to start with or an avocado shape. Okay, we're not going to worry about the jawline or anything or getting it more too narrow just yet. First, we're going to find all of those same lines. We're going to go the same way we started mapping here. So the first thing we're going to draw that vertical uh, axis from the crown of the head to the chin. And you can erase this part of your, your circle in there if you'd like. You could also draw that circle on to the head just to see like where the, if you were to, you know, create a circle from the roundness of the top of the head, where would it fall? Most of the time it does fall kind of underneath the nose a little bit. So it can be helpful to leave it on there. It can help you continue to map the head. Okay. And actually, yeah, maybe I will leave my circle on there to like help me map it because then I can see right there where the nose needs to go. Okay. And then my eye line was right about here, my approximate halfway point between the crown of the head and the chin. Okay, and then I already got my nose line right here. Although as I'm looking at that, <clears throat> maybe I stretched out that circle a little bit when I drew it on here because I was trying to force it to go lower. I feel like the nose needs to go lower. See, that circle's not always the most helpful. I'm going to ignore that circle on second thought because I'm going to look more at the halfway point between my eye line and my chin. And that's about right here. And that looks more accurate for where the nose needs to go. So that's the bottom of my nose. I'm not going to do anything else yet there with the features though, because I'm trying to map things out first. Okay. And then I'm going to do my halfway point between the nose line and the chin line. And you can label all these on here if it's helpful to you. Eye line, nose line. And then this is actually not my lip line, but it's that little space underneath the lips, right? So my center of the lip line is more right about here. Okay, so now let's put those elevational high points on here. So we've got that big circle on the forehead. We've got a big circle on the cheeks. Got a circle on the chin. Got a circle on the nose. 
but it's not right on our nose line. It's a little bit above it. You can do that little triangle shape around it if that's helpful to you. I think it is. Okay, and then we can do the circle for the eye sockets. And then just look at your drawing and just see like, how does that look? Does anything need to be adjusted? Like, I feel like my cheek line, my cheek circles need to be a little smaller. Okay. And then now I'm going to start, <clears throat> excuse me, to look at Elliot's features and see where I need to adjust these general uh, reference points and where I need to adjust the shape of the head. So right away I see that the jawline does need to be a little more defined right here. And I can use all of these mapping points to help me see where the narrowing needs to happen on the jawline. And so it's very round until right about here, right about in line with the line underneath the chin. So right about here is where things need to narrow. And right away when I do that, it feels like I'm looking at a child's head, right? Because if I was drawing an adult, <clears throat> that narrowing is going to be a little bit higher um, because, you know, the, there's we have narrower cheeks. It's not, we're not going to have the same fullness and plumpness to the cheeks. So just that little bit of taking note of where the jawline becomes more prominent makes this already start to feel like a child's head to me because now we've got these nice full uh, cheeks happening, right? Okay, and then up here I can go ahead and maybe sketch in some of the hairline a little bit. And I know some of you were probably dying to put this hairline in already, and maybe you already did, maybe you already did jump ahead. I know it's really hard to work general to specific like this, but the more you can refrain from jumping ahead, the uh, easier it is. You're kind of front ending all of the hard work here so that you have to do less hard work later. Okay, so we've mapped the head. It feels like a child's head. We've got the, uh, placement of where all the features need to go. And now all I'm going to do as far as drawing some of the features real quick, I'm going to switch to, because like I said, I have to manage expectations. We're not, we're not drawing a full portrait here. We're just talking about facial proportions, but I do want to get a little bit of value on here. So I'm switching to an 8B pencil and I'm just using the side of the pencil to add some value. I'm going to quickly sketch in uh, the eyebrows right there at the top of my eye socket circles. I'm going to quickly sketch in just the shape of the shadows that I'm seeing that merge together on the, the eyes. And I used this photo with very limited detail on the face. She was actually, I think, using a filter on my phone when she took this photo so that it wouldn't be too detailed when we're sketching it here. But if you have this map in place, the portrait will really just draw itself because then you're just putting all of your value in the right place on your map. So I'm just using kind of a diagonal hatching line to fill in some of the, the value here. I'm going to put in a little value underneath the nose, even though I don't really see a whole bunch of it there. We can go ahead and put the nostrils in. And then this line at the center of the lips is where I see the darkest shadow on the lips. The lips are very pale just a little bit darker than the skin uh, around the lips. So I'll just 
sketch in a little bit of some value right there. But mostly I'm just putting in that line at the center of the lips. And then adding some very minimal value there. Okay, and then we're going to go ahead and move on to the other one. So like I said, I know I got carried away in my, <clears throat> my sketch for the, the class, but I guess I did add a little more value like to the side of the nose and under the eyes there, even though you don't really see that in that photograph. Okay, any questions about mapping the proportions there on that head? Adrian, somebody asked, um, how did you know where to place the eye socket circles? What were they being measured against? Oh, good question. Uh, yeah, I forgot to mention that. So you can measure the width of the eye uh, using your pencil or a ruler if you'd like and see how many eyes wide that particular person's face is. Most people's eyes are five of their eyes wide, but on a child, sometimes, you know, the eyes are just like, popping out, you know, much bigger. So let's see if we've got the width of an eye. Yeah, we do have a width of an eye in between the eyes. So, and then, you know, the head wraps around, it's not perfectly flat. So you, it's curving over here and there is probably the space for another eye over here, but mostly you can just, you know, use your box, your rectangular box. You could even, if you wanted to kind of create a grid, you could measure, you know, grab a ruler and measure the distance between um, the eye and the side of your box, you know, and see exactly how many inches the space needs to be. And then that'll help you where you draw your circles for the eye sockets. But most of the time they're going to fall uh, pretty much like they're going to kind of stack on top of those cheekbone circles. So that's a good way. And you can also draw like other shapes here. You can draw like you know, a triangle, just like map everything with shapes. There are so many interesting, you know, there's this rectangular shape that occurs between the uh, eyebrows and the, the nose, and that's going to line up your tear ducts, et cetera. So you could draw another rectangle right here and use that to see like on the edge of the eyebrows and then see where that rectangle is. But really the eye can be used to measure a lot of things around the head. So you measure the eye. Most of the time it's the distance of the length of an eye from the tear duct down to the bottom of the nose on most people. Um, so things like that. I used to follow another art teacher on Instagram, a high school art teacher, and I cannot remember her name, but she had an exercise with her high school students where she had them excuse me, I bumped my camera. Um, she had them draw an eye on a little piece of paper that measured, you know, was the measurement of the eye in the photograph. And then they'd place that piece of paper all around on their photo while they were drawing to help them measure um, everything else in the portrait. So use the eye as your main measurement. It's just like with figure drawing, we use the head as the uh, the point of measurement to measure the the body. So how many heads tall is that person? So it's like, how many eye lengths is it from, you know, there to there or there to there or across the mouth? So uh, the eye length is really a great measurement. All right, let's map this other head real quick. I'm gonna go a lot faster this time. All right, so from the crown of the head, this is gonna be a curved line because the head is not flat. And with our easiest photo references, it's nice to start with a head that's facing straight on, straight forward, but most of the time your model is not gonna be doing that. So with this one, we've got a big head tilt happening. So this is a curved line that's happening here. So we're really seeing the roundness of our egg shape or avocado shape and you can draw your box around it if that is helpful to you <clears throat> and the hair is definitely confusing us a little bit about where the crown of the head is but we can kind of follow the roundness of the 
the top of the head and just like create our circle and see like whereabouts the crown of the head is going to be in all that hair. And it's, it's right about there. And yeah, our circle does come just about under the nose there. Although that circle line might be a little confusing, but I'll go ahead and leave it. Okay. And then we've got a curved line underneath the nose and we can see his ears are falling in line with the nose line a little better in this photo. And then we've got the line underneath the lips. It's a little less than halfway between the bottom of the nose, but he's also tilting his head up. So that makes a difference. Okay, and then the line at the center of the lips also curved going right there. And if it helps you to put like additional lines like the eyebrow lines or underneath the eyes, you know, put as many lines on, map out your photo with as many lines as possible. I think it's so helpful. And yeah, grab your ruler and measure the distance between those lines in reference to your box. Measure your box, measure that distance, you know, use everything you've got. The Renaissance artists used everything they had, um, yet sometimes people think doing things like this is somehow cheating, and I do not think it's cheating at all. We're just using all of the tools in our tool belt. So if you need a ruler, use a ruler. Okay, I think I was kind of forcing that circle up a little higher than it needs to be because it's really obvious where the the highest elevational point on his cheek is right here. So I think it needs to be down a little lower, but it's, I'm not seeing the whole thing since it's kind of a, a little more than a three quarter view, but our circle is cut off. We're not seeing as much of this side of the face as we are this side of the face. So this is definitely a trickier head to sketch. If you wanna get really good at drawing people, Draw a different head like this every day. Map it out, sketch it, and then, you know, add your value on top of it. Keep tuning into these classes and I'll keep helping you with the details later, but right now we're just focusing on mapping. Okay, I keep trying to make that circle bigger than it should be because then my eye circle was like overlapping it a little bit. Okay, there we go. That looks pretty good. Did I miss anything? I missed my little dotted line from the tear duct to the nose. And then we already did his pupil down to the center of the lips. Okay, now let's sketch that same thing. So we've got a rectangle that's on the same tilt, but the head is way more tilted in this one than in the last one but overall our rectangle is still kind of tilted to the right there. I love this photo because my daughter took this picture of him. I just love the idea that he was posing like this all contemplatively for his big sister. She was probably directing him how to, to look <laughs> when she took the picture. Okay, so let's start with our big circle. And then this one, you know, we got a younger child here. So we've got much rounder, fuller cheeks happening. Nice round oval coming off of that circle. All right, let's get our vertical axis on there. It's not super curved, but it is a little curved and it particularly curves down here at the bottom and at the top. So make sure you're, you're getting that bit of a curve on there, especially at the bottom. Okay. And then the eye line is definitely curved. So I'm finding my approximate halfway point and I'm curving that line, especially on this side, it's curving, maybe even curves down more than that. So think about the curve on an apple or the curve on an egg or an avocado. It's not a straight line. Although it does, yeah, it does curve more over here too. 
I need to curve it down over there too. It's easy to force straight lines onto photos too sometimes, but you know, really notice what the head is doing. That is curving down. This is curving down. This is definitely curving down. Okay. <clears throat> and then our nose line, I'm not gonna draw the whole thing, but it's about right there. And then the center of the mouse line. And again, I'm not gonna draw the whole thing, but it's right there. And then the, under the chin, so we got a lot of little frowny line because he's definitely frowning. You know, those lips are turned down. That's a curved frowny line going down there. Okay, now we'll put our elevational high points. It's like a superhero so far. And notice where those circles were in reference to your, your nose line and everything too, right? It was kind of going through the, the middle or not quite the middle, but close to the middle. Like I could draw that line down right there, but see, I made it too high again. So this is why I want you to use a light pencil. If you're using a light pencil, it's not a big deal to erase these things. I'm drawing a lot darker than I want you guys to be. Maybe I'll draw my eye sockets first, since I keep wanting to force those. And honestly, I don't feel like I need a measurement with, when I do these circles because I'm just making kind of like not a Venn diagram, but I'm like coming right up against, see how they like create like a little pyramid of circles here. They come, if you do your forehead circle on the photograph kind of down into the, the top of the bridge of the nose and where it kind of hugs, it's like sitting there like in this little space in between the eyebrows, then your eyebrows, uh, your circle should line up with the top of the eyebrows, like this should all line up pretty easily right here. And then all you have to do is draw your circles like that. And then you'll you'll get your placement of the eyes in about the right spot. It took me years into my portrait practice to stumble on all of these patterns. And there are a number of art instructors out there who use these shapes to map or who go even further and draw lots of triangular shapes in addition, um, triangles and rectangles and trapezoids and stuff. But I find the circles to be the most helpful. Although that triangle on the nose, we didn't do that, but that is extremely helpful to see the three dimensions that are happening there, that soft triangular shape. Okay, so from here, we're just, let me grab my 8B pencil again. And how are we doing on time? Oh, good, we got about 10 minutes, that's not bad. Um, so I'm just looking at the, the big shadowy shapes and we didn't have a whole lot of value in that other uh, photograph, so I didn't go too far into this, but with the other one, but with this one, we've got a lot more value to help guide us around. So we're talking about a value scale from zero to 10. Zero being our absolute uh, white blank paper and 10 being our absolute black. If you draw a long skinny rectangle and use a nice dark B pencil, you should be able to get to a absolute black with your pencil. And then you just pull up on your pressure to get your lighter value to happen. And that's our value scale that we're looking at there. And I've had so many classes in the past almost two years on value. There was a number of classes after that intro to graphite on like introducing value. And I'm thinking I may like go back and explore some of those things again in a, a different way, like have some more fundamental classes like that, but they're, they're all there on YouTube and you can go back and find them. But I'm just looking for the big shadowy shapes. So obviously this big mass of hair is super dark. I did have a free class on drawing hair that's on YouTube. It was in colored pencils. It was from over a year ago. 
Um, and then we're looking at the shapes of the, oh dear, someone's calling me. I forgot to turn off my phone. We're looking for the shapes of the shadows and the shapes of the light. And on this photograph, it's very obvious that most of the shadows are all on this side of his face and the lights hitting mostly on this side of the face. Like we're seeing shapes of shadows on the lips and we're looking for the irregular shape. So like if I turn the photograph sideways right here, I see a little heart shape. And this is just little bit of help here with sketching value. If I just, instead of trying to draw the lips, if I just draw the shape of that shadow right there on the lip line, I'm gonna more quickly get an accurate depiction of what his lips are doing than if I try to force a line right there where there isn't a line because the world is made up of light, not hard outlines. Okay, so I'm just shading in with a nice diagonal line the shape of the value that I'm seeing. And then I can go a little lighter and look at the shape of the lighter value and start to get some of the rest of his lips in there. And then same thing on the side of the nose. So I really let the value guide me around. I'm looking at the shape of shadow that I'm seeing on the side of the nose here, and I'm just using a light diagonal hatching line to fill that in, looking at the overall shape of the shadows that I'm seeing, the value in the eye. And then here's where I can double check myself against that dotted line you know, when I sketch in, so if you're sketching with a nice light pencil and you're not being married to every line that you draw on the page and you're open to making adjustments, let's say you draw this eye the first time in completely the wrong spot, you can double check yourself by drawing that dotted line down to see if it meets that point or see if the tear ducts line up with the edge of the nose, etc. So. That's how we're double checking ourselves is we're not committing to anything yet. We're allowing ourselves to be in a state of learning and development and understanding that things might not be drawn perfectly the first time. And so we're using our guide here. And if you do this every day, draw draw a different head every day for 20 minutes like this, you will definitely get better at noticing these patterns and all of these things yourself. I've got a lot of years of practice in my, you know, my tool belt that allows me to be able to do that very quickly. So if it's not just magically appearing in your drawing the way that it just did for me, stick with me in these classes and I'll, I'll help you get there eventually, but you got to put in the practice every day. Oh, and then with this one, yeah, we didn't narrow the, all we had to do on the last one to make it feel like the head was accurate was just narrow her jawline a little bit right there. And on Jack, I think it just needs to come in slightly right about here. And also I'd never put the circle on his chin but it's about at the same part where it narrows, but on an adult, that would be a lot higher. So, and then on this side, it's nice and round. He was about five years old in this photograph. All right. So that is it for mapping child facial proportions. I'd love to see um, y'all's drawings of how you did mapping these. If anybody wants to hold up there. Oh, we've still got five minutes too. So if there's any questions, um, I'd love to answer any questions or go back or review anything. Or if there aren't any questions or anything, you can just see your sketches. You just hold them up and we can spotlight you.
Are there any questions jumping out in the, the chat or comments? Let me see. I see a few people holding theirs up, like Ginger's holding hers up. Um, Ed's iPad. Oh, wow, Ed. That's incredible. And Ginger. Can we spotlight um, these folks? I guess I can do that. I'm spotlighting. Um, are you not able to see? No, I'm not. That's weird. Um, you're on the spotlight one now. I'm myself. Can you see? No, I'm going to remove my spotlight. Maybe that'll help. Are you all seeing someone else spotlighted? Here's one. Do you oh, see that, Adrian? I don't, but they're saying they can see them, so I won't worry about it. OK. Well, I'd like to see who's being spotlighted, though. Oh, no. <laughs> I don't know why. That's weird. Oh, no. Well, I'm seeing some beautiful ones being held up to the camera. They're just not big, so I'm not sure who's. Um, oh, there we go. I was pinned somehow. I just removed my pin. Oh, there's Ed's. Oh, wow, Ed, you really captured both of their likeness. Please feel free to send these to me, by the way. If you want to email them to me, my kids love to see them. They just get such a tickle out of seeing these drawings when they're the subject. Oh, wow, gorgeous, yes. You could maybe make the bottom of the, ch the cheeks a little lower there, a little fuller, and then make it narrow more towards the bottom on that last one. Very nice. Yeah, maybe try to line up the eyes with that center line a little more. Okay, this is Anne. Great efforts, and thank you for sharing. And there's Monica again. That's just, yeah. Oh, Monica, I was just saying, yeah, if on Elliot, uh, if you, where you started to narrow the chin, if you made it like not narrow until it got like just above, you know, make it like the drop down, the like a little lower make the cheeks a little fuller. Oh, very nice. Wow, it's so fun to see how you all are capturing my kids' likeness in, in a variety of ways. All of these so far, I see them. It's really nice. And this is, I mean, I never really pointed it out as we went, but this is how you capture likeness by making sure you're lining things up in the particular way that you see them on that person's head. Oh my gosh, look at that one. You really captured her sullen face in that so well. Oh. The eyes could maybe come a little bit more together, but other than that, you really captured her. Oh, that's gorgeous. Please email these to me. I love seeing these. Oh, look at that. Very nice. This is what I mean about like you captured his likeness and I feel like that is what my son is going to look like in a few more years because somehow he feels a little older and I think it's maybe the eyes need to be a little bigger. Oh my gosh, look at that one. It's like a, oh, the illustrative style that you're applying there is beautiful and you really captured her. Please email a copy of this to me. She will love this so much. Oh, I love it. Oh my gosh, and it's a, a young person who drew her. Thank you. She please email me a copy of that. She will get such she will love that, especially to see that someone close to her age drew it. Thank you, Ale. Is it Alea? Oh wow, and look at this one too, Destiny. Oh my goodness, you guys did a phenomenal job. I am so impressed. So impressed. Thank you all so much for sharing. This was so fun. Um, and yeah, next, uh, I think we already shared the links to the classes that are coming up. We're gonna be doing some deep dives into perspective drawing over the next uh, few months. So this coming month in April, so we don't have a class next week um, since there were five uh, Wednesdays in March, but uh, starting April 5th, we're doing 
uh, one point perspective studies and then uh, sketching a cupcake in one point perspective and like a cityscape outside. And then, uh, yeah, in May, there's going to be some two point perspective and then more uh, atmospheric perspective stuff with landscapes. So we're really focusing on perspective for the next couple months. Thank you all so much. Uh, I hope to see you all again soon. Have a great night. Bye.